Salute, folks. It's your boy, the insurance. Babe, we got trash that needs to go out. Let me check something real quick. No, the trash is good. Okay. Salute, folks. It's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor, Alonzo Hall. And I am returning today to whap and tap on your head with another ADH Wealth Solution. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about... uh. That business creation, business funding, generational wealth, LLC. You could call this kind of a multitude of a rant. I don't know how long this video will be or if I'll start a series or something like that. But at any rate, make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth or to schedule an appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description of this video. So the first thing I want to start, um, and shout out to my man, she, we here, is I want to start by talking about generational wealth. And one of the things she said to me was, uh, listen, you know, uh, like one of the things he was explaining is that um uh, yes he wants he wants to make sure I outlive him so that I can help you know uh, with his legacy but in that he's also not just leaving it upon me right which is what ends up happening often all too often people either they want to have control or they want to have nothing to do with it at all and you need to have a little bit of both so what do I mean by that well he has control in the fact that he knows, you know, he can't control. I could get hit by a bus in the next five minutes, right, and die. Or, you know, I could outlive him. But he's also keeping control in the fact that he is passing down the knowledge that he's gained to his next of kin. So, shout out to a guy that I follow by the name of VPB Money Man. He always says, generational wealth is not enough. You need to have generational knowledge so that you know what to do when you get these lump sums of money. Like she had mentioned, I had a brunch in wealth where I had an attorney on, an estate planning attorney. And, you know, she had a client who, he got, it was about $3 million that he ended up getting in a death benefit. So his family definitely left him. What's going on, boss? Generational wealth. But they didn't give him the knowledge of what to do with that. So what ended up happening, and this happens in the black community often, he got this boatload of money, but then he didn't know what to do with it. So what did he do? He went shopping. Houses, cars, lavish trips, Dubai, Miami, here, there. Well, okay. While you're doing that, you also have to realize that you're going to have situations where uh, you're overspending. Now, if you're overspending and you're not what's going on, Chief, bringing in income, then you're going to be in a position where uh, your spending habits uh, outweigh the benefit of receiving that money. So that's one thing I want to touch on. Another thing with generational knowledge, like he said, things like businesses can be passed on. But the wealthy understand that not all the time is your family going to want to do your business. Uh, one of the things he mentioned, he had a relative who had like inherited a house, but they didn't particularly want to keep the house. Uh, so they sold off the house, which is totally fine. That's definitely something you can do. But if you are setting up for your wishes, you need to make sure that, you know, your relative, what's going on, boss, uh, is definitely in a position to understand your wishes or to grant your wishes so with the passing on of a business sometimes you're not going to be able to have uh that relative want to um to be uh or to continue the business so you need to learn things like buy sell agreements and one major 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 aspect of wealthy uh, like generationally wealthy people is that they pay for services, right? So I'll give you the example that I used with my car where I was talking to my brother uh, and he was like, oh, why don't you just do it yourself? And I said, why would I do it myself when I can pay for it? And then he said, well, aren't those skills and abilities you should have? You're always talking about skills and abilities. Yes, 
I can have the skill and ability to change a tire on a car or change the battery on a car. But those aren't things I do. I don't do physical labor, right? So what's up, boss? So why would I then do something that is not what I do, right? So wealthy people and generationally wealthy people generally tend to do this. I specialize in this thing. That's what I'm going to do. Anything that I don't specialize in, instead of me wasting the time, energy, and effort to get the knowledge in it, because while I'm spending the time doing one thing, I can't spend the time doing another thing, which is why you hear a lot of quote-unquote serial entrepreneurs who never get anywhere, because if you're spending the time doing one thing, you're not spending the time doing another thing. So, for example, if a person does real estate, they're probably not doing insurance because those are two time-consuming things, right? Uh, and vice versa. Hold on really quick. Let me run into this corner so uh, I should be all right. But so you want to look at uh, the, 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 the time value of your money and how you're spending the, uh, the, 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 the time, energy, and effort. So if you're spending time, energy, and effort on something that's not something that is already your money-making endeavor, it kind of stops you from uh, achieving your best uh, stuff there, right? So yes, please. And so you want to always have yourself in a predicament where you can uh, achieve, thank you, the best uh, of your of your situation it really makes sense to spend money on things that you don't want to spend time on and that's why you spend the money because you don't want to spend the time on a certain endeavor right it makes your life easier to just spend the money and say hey i spent xyz dollars on this i'm done so they will spend money on services if i need somebody to manage my finance let's say i'm a millionaire from you know tech well, just because I do tech doesn't mean that I'm going to manage the finances. So, I'll pay someone to do that, right? Like a financial advisor. And then that financial advisor will deal with all my money in that aspect. It's just like going to a doctor, right? You might say, hey, listen, I got this cold. I know the remedies to take care of it. And even when you do pay for that service, you still have activity of your own that you have to do, right? Hey, listen, I paid for this service, but now I have to, you know, follow up. Hey, I paid to go to this, uh, this, uh, this health guru and this nutritionist, but now I have to continue by actually eating the foods that he's recommended for me or doing the exercises that he's recommended for me. So it's the same thing that wealthy people, they pay for the services that'll save them the time to go do whatever it is that they specialize in to keep their wealth or their income coming in. And it ends up costing them less money because like I said with me and my brother saying hey listen go change your own battery well it would cost me time energy effort and money to get to the auto parts store since I'm not mechanically inclined know exactly which battery that fit my car and had the right cranking amps and cold cranking amps and then had the right uh, 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 negative and positive in the right spot and then I'd have had to uh, bring that battery back, find the tool to unscrew the battery, all this stuff that I don't know. So that would have been time, energy, and effort. You're searching it on YouTube, how to change a car battery, da 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 da, da. As opposed to, I called AAA, because when I went online, the battery that I wanted was $269. When I called AAA, they came out, it was $300 in total for them to come to, my, to where my car was, pull up so I didn't have to go to the store, didn't have to pay for uh, an Uber or a bus ride to get to the store or an Uber or a bus ride to get back from the store, in essence, saving me money. Or maybe that would have been the 40 bucks that I spent because, again, the, 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 the battery was 260 So I paid him a total of 300 So that's the 40 bucks I would have spent on an Uber to and from the place. Then I would have also had to buy the tools to remove the battery. Because it ain't like I got the tools. So then I had to buy the tools. So you see how oftentimes, especially in the black community, I want to do it myself, ends up costing you more money. This is why you have black folks who are in uh, lower socioeconomic statuses who are going to end up being affected by things like 
the influx of IRS agents. All this stuff that's happening happens to poor people because they tend to put themselves in poor positions, right? Oh, I'm not going to pay your fee of $300, Alonzo, because why would I pay that fee of $300? Because the knowledge that you're going to get and what we're going to implement is going to uh, probably get you back $3,000, right? But you're thinking that spending that money is a waste, you know, but that's, again, people's thinking. So, again, when we're talking about generational wealth and generational knowledge, there's a boatload of stuff. I'm also going to do some videos, again, further talking about business structure because we, and, and like I said, when you have the business, you want to set up that buy-sell agreement because the next of kin might not want to get into the business. A lot of people don't look at those things. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm just ranting now, so I'm going to stop for now. Um, you're going to see a lot of these in the next coming weeks because I just got to get all this stuff off of my chest. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, the insurance junkie, your fiduciary fella, the all-star advisor Alonzo Hall, your social media insurance broker. Make sure you hit that like, drop a comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're made aware every time I release new content. And as always, share, share, share. Lastly, to contribute to channel growth or to schedule an appointment with a licensed financial professional, the links are in the description of this video. <clears throat> with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, wipe ass. Work in progress every day and see success. Wipe ass. Work in progress every day and see success. Wipe ass. Work in progress every day and see success. And remember, folks, when people challenge you, they don't challenge you to challenge you but they challenge you to challenge you. Accept the challenge. Salute.